Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So yay, today I'm finally going to do that review that I promised on the Living Guard mask. I got so many requests to look into this mask, and I'm, I'm really happy that I'm able to do the review for you today. So um, I just want to say welcome and thank you. I see that I've got a few new subscribers, and I always say that's like a little celebration for me because I'm trying to grow this channel. Now, um, for those of you who are new, I don't do any affiliate links on my channel, so I'm going to link all the information that I have on this mask down below, but um, none of that is an affiliate link. It's just simply to take you to the product, so that's that I so appreciate you guys sharing the content with people who might find it helpful because of course I want to grow my channel so anyway thank you and welcome so Living Guard Technologies has a mask that um, is in the category that of that new um, budding industry of uh, antimicrobial textiles so similar to the Sono mask by Sonovia and the um, bio block mask by Argamon Technologies. This is the Living Guard mask. And um, so a lot of you guys asked me about this one. This one is um, has, it's a very interesting technology. It's based on electrical charge. So the fabric on this mask has um, positive charges all over it. Like on the outside, something like 24 billion positive charges per square centimeter. And on the inside closest to the wearer, um, 36 billion positive charges per square centimeter. And that positive charge somehow attracts the negative charge on the membrane of bacteria and the um outer layer of viruses and it renders them inactive it some of them explode and um, it's just I find this fascinating so um, it also does have a filter inside and that is I'll get to that in a moment uh, not sure what that's made out of but it is a non-woven like industry standard filter so um, how effective is that they have been able to test um, against with the COVID-19 virus in labs and they'll tell you that they have 99.9% .9 effective I find that it, it depends um, which research you look at because they've had this thing tested at a lab in Europe. They've had it tested at a lab in the university in Arizona. Um, that one showed 99.5, but really 99.5% effective, 99.9% effective, um, all very, very impressive. Um, so I do think that their, their website could use a little bit of um, redesign. It's a little bit difficult, especially if you're from the United States. If you go to Living Guard's website, you'll see that there's all these different masks. There's like three different styles and then with valves, without valves. And then if you decide you want to buy something and you click on it, um, it says to click on wherever you're buying. So if I'm in the United States, so once I clicked on the United States, that opened up a different page and the masks had different names, but I'll tell you what, they, they're all, it's the same, they're all the same categories. They just have different names for the market in the United States and maybe other countries. I only clicked on the US. Um, now they do have a statement um, before you can enter that website that says that they are working on FDA testing and until then, none of the claims that they make about these products are, um, they're not not authorized by the FDA to, you know, they're just, they're the, they'll just publish their claims from uh, other from other industries and other labs where they have had things tested. That's pretty much the same as um, all these manufacturers. I think this FDA testing process takes a long time. The FDA is pretty busy right now. And um, in the meantime, the manufacturers move on and they have things tested in independent, independent labs and at universities and at labs in the European Union and whatnot. So I can't blame them for that now. Um, it did, once it arrived, it did come with a piece of paper that said the product has been authorized by the FDA under an EUA, and that means an emergency use um, authorization for use as source control by the general public as well as healthcare providers in healthcare settings um, to help the spread of infection and illness during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now that's an emergency use authorization that's not going to stay that way. They'll still have to undergo the FDA testing if they want the FDA um, approval. And I think they are also undergoing NIOSH, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. So um, I'll keep you updated and see how that goes. Um, and so once you get in there and you'll see that there are three different kinds, um, there's one called the street. Uh, and when you look on the American website, that's, that's uh, called the activity. 
Um, then there's a middle one called the Pro or the Safety, and then the other, the last one is called the Ultra or the Defend. Now, I pretty much ignored the street or activity one because it looked like the difference between that and the others was that really didn't have any filter at all. So it had the technology and the fabric, but as long as this is a mask that was boasting both, I decided I was going to go with one of the other two. Um, so then I was left to choose between the Pro Safety or the Ultra Defend. Um, the difference between those was one extra layer of fabric of their um, positively charged technology um, and what it translated to was something they called 95% bacterial filtration efficiency versus 98% bacterial filtration efficiency. So I went ahead and got the Ultra Defend, the 98% bacteria filtration efficiency with that extra layer. Um, this one retails for $38.95. Um, if you went down to the Pro, you'd go down $5. And if you went down to the Street, which like I said, I wasn't really interested in that one, that's another $8 um, drop. Um, now, in addition to that, once you choose either the Pro or the Ultra Defend like I got, you also have the choice of a valve. And a valve adds another dollar, um, but allow me to digress a little bit as I talk about valves. <laughs> um, a valve is a comfort feature that is meant to um, help the wearer so that you don't feel all that buildup for that second or two when you exhale. You don't feel that wet um, wet, hot air, um, you don't fog up your glasses as easily. Um, the reason is because the it's a one-way valve that you have in your mask, and so when you inhale, the valve is shut, but when you exhale, it forces the valve open, and the exhale goes right through that valve instead of pooling in your mask right near you. Well, the problem with that is, um, if you were, let's say, a carrier of COVID or you're shedding any kind of bacteria or virus, um, that valve bypasses any of the technology and it bypasses the filter in this mask. And um, there are a lot of countries that don't allow the sale of a mask uh, with a valve in it. Um, and I personally wish that we didn't hear either. I think that um, until that's been shown to be safe, which I can't imagine it will be, uh, I don't think it should be sold. I, um, you know, I know on my website, we're always looking into like how the mask can protect us, but um, I don't want to ignore the fact that the preponderance of the evidence behind the benefits of wearing masks is really has to do with the whole community. So it's really about helping the other people around you and protecting them from you. And um, I think there ought to be a high standard for that. And I wouldn't want to be sitting in an office or on a bus or something next to somebody who had an expiratory one-way valve. Um, so I'm not going to recommend getting one. I didn't get one. I got the Ultra Defend without the valve. Um, in addition to that, there is a little bit of a hassle factor with the valve. I noticed um, they say that I noticed like little tricks for if your valve becomes dislodged, what to do, um, that you can't get the valve too waterlogged when you go to wash the mask and some kind of a statement that said like if the valve um, breaks or it's um, so it gets too waterlogged and it's beyond repair that you can't um, change out the valve, you have to throw away the mask and get a whole new mask. So even if you were thinking about getting the valve, don't. <laughs> so, um, they did have a discount code for 15% off, and I will link that down below um, in the description box. Now, as far as the sizing, um, these come similarly to the Synovia, but not similar sizing, but similar labeling. They come in kids, and then they come in medium and large. So the two adult sizes are medium and large. I'm going to talk about the sizing in a minute when I put it on for you. Um, but they did have a size chart, and you can find that on the page on their um, livingguard.com page that I'm going to link below under the frequently asked questions. You can look at a pretty good size chart. Um, now, the mask itself is made out of um, three different layers. Um, the one that has four layers like this one is just an added layer of the antimicrobial um, textile. Um, but the three layers that are basic to, to both the, the Pro and the Ultra are um, one, the outer layer. Now the outer layer has three sub layers, okay? So the outer layer comprises one, an antiviral um, repellent kind of fabric that they say the study is ongoing, so I don't have any data on how it performs. Um, and then comes their technology that has been tested in the lab, as I said earlier, um, and that is sandwiched in between. So there's then another layer of the 
um, repellent coating. So those three make up the outer layer of the mask. The middle layer is the is the uh, filter, and um, that is what they call a non-woven industry standard filter. So I thought that would mean polypropylene because that is what a non-woven industry standard filter is. As far as I know, I can't think of anything else it would be. Um, but when I asked them, they wouldn't confirm that. They just said it might be polypropylene. It it's they said that it is um, proprietary and they couldn't share that with me, um, but they do say that it filters at 2.5 micron size, so that's similar to like the Synovia, which is at three. It's well within the ability to filter out large respiratory droplets. Um, I know for those of you who already know me, you know where I am on filters. For those of you who haven't heard my reviews before, I'm going to link a video down below where I talk about masks and filters in general. I don't get too enamored with um, filter claims um, where filters filter tinier and tinier little particles and they seem to try to compete with um, N95s and things like that because when you get down to a particle size that small, it turns out that really the fit is more um, important than the actual filters itself because you're actually going to be forcing a lot of leak so you'll be breathing a lot from around the mask and rather than through it so even though the filter has the ability to filter that size it doesn't mean that when you inhale and exhale that you are forcing air through that filter you're probably leaking so I, I think 2.5 micron is you know very reasonable it's a, a respectable filter and then the inner layer that's next to the face um, is also that living guard um, antimicrobial technology um, but it is a quick drying and low humidity soft fabric that sits next to the Face, and I took that to mean that that is moisture wicking. Um, so the outside, 24 billion charges per square centimeter, and on the inside, 36 billion charges per square centimeter. Now, as far as washing this, they say that you're supposed to only wash it in cold water. Um, it says that on the website. Now, I did find that when these the two papers that came with it, they actually disagreed a bit, and I have an outstanding question with the um, company. And if, if I'm wrong on this, I'm going to put it in the description box. But um, one of these papers agrees with what was said on the website, and the other one doesn't. So um, one of them says mild soap, um, but both the website and the other papers say no soap, no detergent, no bleach, no nothing, just plain water. Um, just a couple of minutes in cold water. They say don't wring, don't agitate it really hard, and they said do it once a week, and it will be good for 210 um, wears washing it once a week that's about 30 washes. So 30 washes or 210 wears um, is the lifespan of this mask. So that you know it, it, at a glance it seems like a, a lot cheaper than a Sono mask. Um, but when you figure that this one is good for, it sounds like about six months, um, it's, it's probably, they're similar price points. Um, so anyway, I did wash it once. Um, it washed very nicely. It was just, like I said, just simple water. Um, I have said in the past that I think not being able to wash something in the machine is sort of in the minus column for me. Um, but I will say that given the fact that they're saying only water, no detergent actually offsets some of that um, just because I think part of the hassle in when I have to hand wash is the worry about getting the soap to work it through and how do you know that it got all the way through the fabric and then how do you know you got it all the way rinsed off and it's supposed to be handled so delicately that it just makes it kind of stressful. Um, so the fact that they're saying just water kind of offsets that issue and it doesn't make the hand wash requirement such a hassle. Um, I did find that it washed easily um, because you're not supposed to wring it out. I didn't want to hang it to dry because I didn't want it dripping all over, but it has some structure to it and I just stood it up like this, like a little pup tent on top of a towel and it was dry in the morning. Um, <clears throat> now I did do my little water resistance test for you and uh, you'll see that on the outside it definitely is water resistant. Everything rolls right off and that's exactly how it should be. Um, on the inside of the fabric soaks in and it's water wick it's moisture wicking can you see that i hope you can see that yeah it's moisture wicking um and it is very comfortable on the inside so let me go ahead and put it on for you so the first thing i noticed when i when i got it out of the package is that it has some interesting characteristics okay it has a nose piece and the nose piece it's not real long i wish that were a little longer but it's no big deal you have enough leverage on it but it has this really interesting thing where at the bottom this part that's supposed to curve onto your chin there's elastic there's elastic in there um and that makes for kind of a a good fit under your chin i don't want to say a seal um it's actually interesting because inside their literature they actually call this a respirator but i'm going to politely um disagree with that this is not a respirator at least by you 
United States standards, this is a mask, okay? This is not a fitted device, and it's not, even the filter alone isn't functioning as a respirator should. Um, but I, I do feel that it's got a better fit than a lot of masks, a tighter fit. There is a trade-off to this, though, that I'm going to get to in a minute. Now, um, it does have adjusters. I like that it has adjusters, and you can place the adjuster anywhere along the ear loop. So if you don't want it right behind your ears, you can move it so that it'll be hanging down here. Um, so the, the elastic... There, there's no like knot or anything that you can't get the adjuster past. Um, the adjusters themselves, though, are a little bit hard. I was a little surprised by that. This is kind of, it's not a metal, but it's like a hard plastic. Or as other ones that I've reviewed recently have like a squishy, rubbery sort of feel to them. But um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not crazy about those adjusters. Um, and then as far as the strap itself, I, I think most of the masks that I've reviewed with ear loops have either like a foam uh, or a, there is some sort of a soft fabric that has some elastic in it, um, or it's they're covered. They have elastic that's covered, but this is just a piece of raw elastic that, um, you know, this is like the kind of thing you'd see sewn inside of like the waistband of your underwear or something. And I did, I, I personally feel that this is a little bit rough sitting behind the ears against the skin all day. I was a little surprised by that. And I wondered if I, I couldn't be the first person to think that. So if anybody's had experience with this mask, let me know. Um, when you put it on, it does, it fits pretty snug. Um, this, the piece under here, it's noticeably um, fitting snug enough that any leak, like if I were to take a big deep breath and blow up forcefully, it doesn't tend to leak through here where the elastic is. It tends to, the added that I, I force out tends to leak from other places, namely at the top, okay? And that's the trade-off I'm going to show you in a minute here. Um, you'll notice that when I just breathe in and out normally, it does suck in and balloon out a little bit. Some people might be bothered by that. I think that actually says something um, very complimentary about this mask. I think that says that I'm not leaking as much as I am uh, in other masks, okay? Just that says something about its fit. <sighs> if I blow really hard, of course, I can feel it leaking from other places. Now, here comes the trade-off. The trade-off with having this part at the bottom a little tighter is when you add glasses or any kind of safety eyewear it doesn't matter how well you adjust that nose piece you get some fogging i don't know if you can see that on camera but i'm really fogging up in here and now the other side's starting to fog as well so i think that if i'm going to add glasses or safety goggles with this mask yeah. i'm gonna have to do a taping technique that i have discussed in another video or use a face shield instead. Um, I think that this is actually one of the two reasons for having a little more leak down below. In the operating room, sometimes people tighten the top and loosen the bottom when they're wearing glasses. I also think that since any mask is gonna have some leak from somewhere, I would rather have it down below because a leak down below is not going to be conducive to large respiratory droplets entering since those largely fall. Um, that said, I mean, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. And if you don't wear any kind of glasses, you know, again, you'd want to put a face shield on because I, I wear um, eye protection, in my opinion, is under considered. Um, but I, I think I, my biggest issue is this elastic is it's kind of raw next to the skin. And I really hope that they will look at that when they do their next design or, you know, their next lot of them, because I think if it were not for that, I think it'd be a very comfortable mask. And I think it's a good mask and I think it's an impressive technology. Um, so then my next question to them was, what about the time to eradication? So this is something I've talked about with both the BioBlock and with the Sono mask. And most of them say these studies are ongoing and they don't really know how long. Um, because, you know, you can't assume that because you have an antimicrobial mask that anything that's on here, regardless of the viral of the viral load is just completely eradicated in a nanosecond. It's not. Um, so what they told me is 80% is gone within 30 minutes. Um, and then again, it depends a little bit on the viral load. So um, what that tells me is the same thing I said in an earlier review on the Synovia mask, which is that um, you do want to treat this as a biohazard if you have to take it off and then put it back on in some short period of time. It's probably not a big deal if you took it off left it on your dresser overnight, you get up in the morning, you have to handle it and put it on. I, I doubt that's an issue, but um, first of all, I always put a mask on with clean hands. I always clean my hands before I take it off and then after it's off. So that's three hand washes. But um, I think that if, especially if you are going to like take this off, let's say to eat lunch, and then you've got to put it back on in a half an hour, 
yeah, you're not sure I would treat this as a biohazard. So um, the nice thing about ear loops is that you can do a lot without touching the body of the mask. But if you have to touch, you know, first of all, you wash your hands, you take it off. I would fold it so that it's inside to inside. With that. I don't want to touch the inside of the mask. I want to keep that clean. Okay, not because I, <laughs> I don't particularly want to touch this either if I think it's dirty, but I can now put this down and then wash my hands. Okay, and then when I go to pick it up, I can pick it up like this too. So again, I'm not touching that inside. You can open it up holding the ear loops and get it on your face without ever having touched that part that's going to be next to your face. So I think it is really important to remember hygiene and that any of these technologies, as phenomenal as they are, they are not a substitute for proper hygiene when you're handling the mask. <clears throat> so anyway, I hope that helped. Um, I do think this is an exciting product. I do think that people who have issues with size on the Sono mask are going to have to, you know, consider sizing up for sure if you want to go with the Living Guard. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. If I haven't answered them, I'll, if I can't answer them, I'll make sure to try and I'll get with the company again. Um, I'm so appreciative of all the suggestions and all the comments. You guys, I'm just loving the interaction and I just want to say thank you so much again. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.